I'm Brendan. Uh, I do performance analysis. I also write tools out of necessity. Uh, I used to be Brendan at Sun. A lot of people know me from that. Then Oracle, and I'm now working at Joint. Joint is a cloud computing provider. Joint also makes cloud computing software, so that people can run it themselves. Our main operating system is SmartOS, and we use that as the host operating system, and also as a guest via operating system virtualization. We also provide Linux and Windows as a guest via the KVM. Uh, and since I've moved to Joint, I've been getting a lot of experience with Linux performance analysis, which is great. The agenda for this talk, a lot of the talks that I give, I will usually start with a lot of theory, and then I'll show some data to back up that theory. For this talk, I thought I'd do something a bit different, which is always exciting. I'm going to start with the data and go through that first, and then show the theory at the end. This is going to be different because uh, by starting with the theory, I will often pick the data to support that theory, but then maybe leave out some data that doesn't support the theory. Here, by presenting all of the data first that I want to cover, you'll see that the theories don't actually match up everything. They don't actually explain everything, and that's what real life is about. Uh, there's no neat solutions for all the things I'm about to go through. Um, some, things are, some things are neat, some things are messy, and some things are unknown. This talk uses SmartOS and DTrace to illustrate concepts that are applicable to most operating systems. And I'm well aware that I'm at a Linux conference, so uh, but I, I think you'll find that the, the point of a lot of these, uh, the concepts and tools that I'll be going through is to explain and illustrate concepts that you can readily apply. It's about sharing ideas. So to get started with the data, I'm going to go through four areas of example problems. This sounds really mundane, CPU, memory, disk, and network. I'm sure you've seen a lot of uh, performance presentations in the past that go through those four topics. Um, as you'll see, uh, I'm about to go through them in, in a slightly different way. Some of these, as I've just said, have neat solutions, some are messy and some have none. I've mentioned some of these topics before over the past year on my blog and in other talks. Some of these are new, some of these I was working on this week with customers. So, uh, let's start with CPUs, CPU issues. It's a nice picture of a CPU wheel. The first problem I'd like to talk about is CPU utilization. So we would like to identify if you have single or multiple CPUs at 100% utilization. That's a sign of a software scalability issue, a single thread of execution. We would also like to identify average, minimum, and maximum CPU utilization. CPU utilization balance, whether you have a tight or a loose dist distribution, uh, and time-based characteristics. Is it changing over time? Is your utilization going up? Is it getting worse? Is it bursting? Uh, if it is bursting, what's the burst interval? Is it a second or is it five seconds? What's the interval between bursts? Um, I've found that, and, and a lot of tools provide this, they answer the bursting by using a, a time domain, for example, 60 by one second samples. And we'd like to understand utilization for small to large environments, entire data centers of balance. So the very first topic I'm starting with sounds really simple, CPU utilization. Sounds like it's been done to death. NVSTAT answers CPU utilization on a single server very well. Um, this version is from SmartOS. You're probably familiar with the, the Linux version, which looks slightly different. Um, that's fine. I can look at this output. It's, it's one second, one server, 16 CPUs. I can see that CPU 2 is at, uh, CPU 1, sorry, is at 100% utilization. It has zero in the idle column. That's fine if I was just looking at one server in one second. Scaling that to 60 seconds in one server, uh, I, there's just so much text data, you, you wouldn't really be doing this at the command line. It'll be difficult to see. If you're using a terminal, you'll be scrolling off and you'll be hitting the, the page up and page down key. I thought it'd be fun to see what this looked like for an entire data center. This is 5,312 CPUs and it's showing 60 seconds. And I really did go to the effort of rendering the MPSTAT data as an image so that we can see what it looked like. Uh, it kind of looks like fabric. Uh, <laughs> it's impossible to see, it's just a big gray smudge. Uh, I put a box around what data one server contributes to this. This, by the way, is, is one of the uh, joint public cloud data centers, and so we're effectively looking at uh, not quite the full data center, but this is an availability zone. 
the way I actually rendered the MPSTAT data was as horizontal stripes. And so there's a stripe in the top middle uh, which turned out to be a, a misconfigured server, which I identified from this image, which I thought would be completely useless. So sometimes it's fun to actually try it out and uh, see what happens. A lot of people use line graphs for CPU utilization. I'm sure you're familiar with a lot of these tools. There's lots and lots and lots out there. And they'll do things like show you the average, show you the maximum. You might see standard deviation. You might see 99th percentile to give you some idea of the distribution. Box plots. Box plots. Uh, CPU utilization as a, as a line graph doesn't scale to thousands of CPUs. So there's 5,312 CPUs, each is a line. Um, it took me several types of software packages before I <laughs> learned which one could handle that many lines. Turns out it's GNU plot. Everything else died. <laughs> I also plugged the same data into R so that I could do a, a wireframe, um, three-dimensional visualization. Again, I didn't think this was going to be very interesting. It is kind of interesting in that um, the way I've laid out the data, each server is, is a rectangle. Um, the shorter dimension is the, the CPUs from, from 0 to 16 to 0 to 15. And then the longer dimension is the 60 seconds worth of samples. All of the blips you see all over the map is a monitoring tool that's calling um, a heavyweight system-based process that, that lights up the CPU for uh, just over a second. You can see that quite clearly. It's running on basically all of the servers. Um, and then you see a lot of other patterns in here. You see um, lines of dots, and the interval between the dots is, the, is, this is usually monitoring as well. You see some servers that are doing CPU utilization. Very pretty, not really practical. Uh, this almost works for that data center, but the resolution is getting to the point where it doesn't. In the future, of course, we're going to have systems that have a lot more CPUs. We're going to have um, data centers that are bigger, and this just has a limit. CPU utilization as a heat map, however, can scale to an unlimited number of CPUs. This is where the utilization is on the y-axis, time is on the x-axis, and uh, this is also known as a column quantization, where each bucket represents a particular time and latency range, and the color saturation of that bucket reflects how many items fell into that, that time and latency range, which uh, is the number of CPUs in this case. This actually works, so that's actually showing the, the entire data center, and I've got a red line across the top showing that there are a number of CPUs that are at 100% utilization, and at the bottom, we have a lot of CPUs are idle, uh, and we can see there's, there's some other details in here, some banding, but most of the CPUs are, are, are not even 30% busy, with the exceptions at the top. Uh, and that works really well. We're actually using this adjoining cloud analytics. I'd love to see this type of visualization show up elsewhere if you're into writing these sort of tools. Um, what we did was uh, not only do we show, we're showing it in real time, it's collected across the entire data center and then presented. You can click on, say, the top line, I want to know what those CPUs were, and it'll take you straight to the, the compute node or the server that has them, so that you can then continue and drill down. If you're wondering how that magic is possible, we are actually saving four dimensions to the data. So it's, it's, the fourth dimension is the further breakdown, in this case it's the server host name. So that not only can you identify problems, but you can click on things and then drill down further to continue the investigation. Again, it works really well. Uh, we also use it for disks and network interfaces, and uh, it's, it's something that hopefully we'll see as a, a, a matter of necessity with these devices scaling continually. I didn't mention utilization as a metric can be a bit misleading in the first place. It's really a percent busier over time interval. Devices can accept more work even though they say they're 100% busy, and an especially good case for that is storage controllers. Uh, may not directly relate to the performance impact. And so once you hit 100% busy, it doesn't necessarily mean that performance starts to go bad. Uh, it is a tool, but it is not a primary tool <coughs> of pain. So as a summary for that particular problem, I just want to throw the data out there presented. Data is readily available. It's very easy to get per CPU utilization on any operating system that I know about. Um, you can use a new visualization to plot that. Um, coding up the heat maps, uh, 
I, I, I work with Brian Ketchell, he's done this a couple of times from, from scratch now. It's not that, if you don't have a library to do the heat maps, it's like a, a day or two's work just to do lib ping and then go through the columns and, and, and code out the loops. So not, not, a, not terribly difficult to do. Uh, very effective once we scale. The second type of problem, I just want to throw the data out there, and, and as I go through these problems, they get less and less neat and less and less solved. CPU usage. So given that the CPU is hot, and I can identify that from the previous visualizations, what is it actually doing? So beyond just VM stats, user and system ratio, profiling works pretty well. That's where we can sample at an interval. Uh, the program count, the, the stack backtrace. Uh, I might want to look at the user lane stack backtrace for percent user time, if that was heavy. Kernel stack backtrace for percent system time. There are lots and lots of tools that do this. There's, there's been tools that have profiled the program count basically forever. Um, a lot of developer studios for languages have it in built. Dtrace has it, and Profile has it, uh, System Tap has it uh, to a degree. I couldn't get it to work for arbitrary frequencies. Here I've got an example that uses Dtrace. I am profiling at 997 hertz uh, if the exact name is MySQL D, and I'm frequency counting the entire user land stack backtrace. And I can I can pass this through the GCC plus field and then print out the C plus uh, plus names properly. Uh, they've got the manual signatures, and I can actually see why my SQL is hot on CPU by going through the hot stack traces. This sort of one liner, very powerful tool. I, I've used it all the time for the past since, since D traces existed, um, so that I can quickly identify why the kernel's busy. So I can quickly identify why applications are busy. Where are they spending their own CPU time? A big problem with it, however, is that. It looks really nice in a slide like this, but I've truncated over half a million lines of output. So I'm just showing you the last two frequent stack traces. This, the, the, the file that contains the output, like a human would be unable to read. There is so much output and different stack traces that we're running. Again, this is a fun time to, to render it and see what that looks like. And again, it just looks like a, a big gray mess. Each of the blobs is a stack trace, and we were looking at the bottom right corner about 20% of the way up. Presenting this differently, this is something we're now using. Um, a, a visualizing, visualizing it as what I call a flame graph. Um, something similar had been done before where they were using the, the x-axis to show the passage of time. I am not doing that, I'm using the x-axis to show the uh, ratios of samples. So longer means more time, but it just means more samples for that particular stack trace. The y-axis is showing stack depth. This one is, is the same data we're just looking at as a, as a, a gray box. Um, and it's actually rendered as a SVIG, which I couldn't present in, in Keynote, but you can mouse over elements. And what's especially useful for me is it tells me, I had it tell me, the number of samples and the percentage that that stack trace of that element contributed to the CPU being busy. Um, very handy. I can quickly, if, if I think I've got a, a, a lock, spin lock issue, I can quickly go and quantify that and say, is it, is it really an issue? Is it 20% of the CPU time or is it 0.2% of the CPU time? You can't tell if you're just looking at the if you're just looking at a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the data, you don't know if there's a higher level function that's actually on CPU more, and you're looking at, I mean, these stacks actually contribute about 1% to the, to the CPU usage. So we actually needed a visualization to make sense of it much more quickly. That was just some Perl that turns dtrace output into an inter interactive speak. Uh, I put it on GitHub. Works for kernel stacks, works for user plus kernel stacks. Uh, I've been meaning just to write no profile translator so I can spit out that profile output as well. Uh, is question? It, is it computationally expensive to generate uh, a like this? Not hugely. I, I haven't, so, so everyone, since we're now using this, it's a good question. Is it computationally expensive? Not terribly. It's just a lot of uh, line processing, building up a hash table in Perl so that it can uh, join things together and then spit out a speak. 